I'd like to take your seat. Praise the Lord. Now, today is the last day of the month, and beautifully, the last Sunday of the month. As you're clapping, you're celebrating God who gave you life and gave you health and kept you strong. As you're celebrating God, you know that you are going to see the last day of this year, and you're going to see the first day of the new year, and you will stay in 2021 and enter 2022, 2023, 2024. Nothing will cut your life shut. Somebody shout an amen if you believe it. We're still we'll be rounding up on the revelation we're having on the secrets to the blessing. And this morning, I want, first service, I want to talk on what I call find your God ordained walk. I found that nothing will launch you to the explosion of your blessing like finding who you are born to be. Who you are born to be is all you need to be for the blessing to flow through you. Remember, I want to recap a little that we are not the ones believing God to be blessed. We are the ones God has blessed. God has blessed us. The Bible says, thanks be to God who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms. In Christ Jesus. So when Christ entered you, all the blessings of God in the spiritual realm entered you. Boy, you are loaded with grace. Something is in you. Now, sometimes you look at us based, you look at ourselves based on what somebody says concerning you. You are not human opinion, you are divine opinion. You are God's God's created desire. God a certain heaven desired a species like you and dropped you. Can I ask you? You are dropped by God to make things happen. So you are not just an another number. No, you are God's calculated creator. God sat in heaven and desired your kind to be on earth, and he created you. So you're not a mistake. You don't make a mistake at all. Now, we are already blessed because Christ is in us. I told us, I said, Christ in you is the blessing in you. The day Christ entered you, the blessing entered you. If you're born of God, you are blessed. You are blessed. And do you know the truth? The blessing internal works out external things. You see, our life is not meant to be from external things to internal. No, we are not meant to live from around us. We are meant to live out our life. Bible said, walk out your salvation. There is something God has put in you, walk it out. When Christ entered you, I, I've told you this, when Christ entered you, your nose didn't change. Your face didn't change. Christ did not change your physicals. Christ changed your internal so that from the internal changes, external changes will occur. It's a force that works from within you. Christ in you, Bible said, the hope that everything around you shall be glorious. So we are the blessed of God. Now, to be able to trigger the blessing, explode the blessing, we need to do one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Find out the work God has ordained for you. I'd like you to know that there's a difference between work and job. Job is your means of survival on earth. Job, I put it this way, is 30 days, one payment. Job is you sweating to survive. And God has not called us to do jobs. You understand? God has not called us to do, do jobs. God has called us to do work. Now, work is a platform where the potentials stored in you by God is engaged. Which means until you find your work, your potentials will be dormant. Until you find your work, you will not release the essence of you. The real you will not come out. That authentic you will not come out. You end up pursuing shadows. And, and I've come to know that this is how people live. People are living just for survival. We are not called to live for survival. We are called to release our potentials. We are called to bring out everything God has taught in us. Can I shock you? You are a storehouse of glory. You are a storehouse of the energy of God. There is too much stored in you than you can ever imagine. Child of God. Don't just calculate and conclude based on your weaknesses. Behind your weaknesses, there are strengths of God. I've told you many times that everyone that is born of God, or everyone on earth, is an enemy energy from God. You are an energy from God put in the flesh to manifest God to the flesh. Child of God, God cannot be manifested in the physical realm. So God desired to be manifested. What did God do? He took an energy of him. He took an ability from him and put it in the flesh. You are an energy of God wrapped in the flesh so that through flesh, the glory stored in you called the energy of God shall be revealed. Does that make sense? And until you find out that energy, and you begin to engage it out. You will not be able to reveal the totality of God. Can I say this? All of us, we are born of God to reveal God. There's a side of God the world will never see until you rise up. There's a glory of God only you can unveil. 
Child of God, as all of us are here now, they say, glory, I'm born to unveil. They say, glory, you're born to unveil. They say, dimension in God, you're born to unveil. And can I show you, God decided to put that energy in you so that God will be made unveiled to people who doesn't know him. And until you discover that energy and you begin to release it, you have not found yourself. The best of you is not around you. The best of you is within you. And if there's anything you must, am I talking? If there's anything you must do, is to go on a search. Finding out the energy stored in you. The day you find that energy, you will unveil God. And any man that unveils God, will unveil the blessing. Any man that unveils God, will reveal the blessing. That of God, God wants you to reveal the blessing. By revealing the energy of God stored in you. I will look at scriptures. I'm starting from here. Media. Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 5. 15. The first thing God gave man. Was a platform. To release his potentials. Are we together? The first thing God gave man. Was a platform. The platform for releasing your potential. Is a place of work. God didn't give a man a job. He gave him a work to do. Praise the Lord. Genesis 2.15. The Bible said, And the Lord God took the man and put him in Eden, in the garden of Eden, to dress it and to work it. Other ones will say to dress it and to, and to keep it. Keeping talks about working. So the first thing God gave man was that, that environment where the ability stored in man can be unveiled. Are we together? Are we together? We are not called to eat first. We are called to work. It's the work that guarantees the eating. But many wants the eating without the walking. Now, many wants to walk just for survival. Many just want to walk to find food to eat. That's not your calling. But Bible says, seek it for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. So, it's what you're born to do that is meant to release, release every ability in us and return back the glory we deserve. Somebody I pray today that every glory we deserve to experience as you do the work you're born to do may the work you're born to do as you do it may it connect you to the glory you deserve. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 Bible says for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God before time ordained that we shall walk in them. So there's a walk that was ordained that you walk. In walking the walk you ordained to walk, the blessing is triggered. If it's not in line with the walk you ordained to walk, the blessing cannot be triggered. Many are doing things, but they thing you need to do to trigger the ability, the strength, the glory of God, the blessing of God stored in your spirit is you find the work you're born to do. Bible said here, he said his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Now we are not created in the world. We are created where? You know there are two kinds of people that people who are created in the world. There is creation in the world and there are creations in Christ Jesus. Those who are created in Christ Jesus it is on that platform we begin to find out the work that was ordained for you. Child of God, I know we live in the world, but Bible says that we are not of the world. We are more than the world. They say work, they is who we are created to be in Christ Jesus. Now, if you are not in Christ, you can't find it. If you are not in Christ, can I shock you? In the spiritual, you are lost. You are not found. It's in Christ God finds us. Also, you know that it was in Christ God blessed us. Thanks be to God who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. So it was in Christ Jesus we are found. It was in Christ you are blessed. In that Christ also, that's where we start finding out the work that God has ordained for us. First of all, write it down. There is a work I was ordained to do. So we are not here to look for what to do. We are here to discover what we are born to do. We are not here to be running around thinking about what am I to do? Now it's because you've not been able to align yourself with God. Any day you align yourself with God, what to do will not be a challenge. You will, it will ooze out from you. It will come out from you. What you are born to do is already in you. Somebody follow me now. 
this microphone, what this microphone was born to do is in it. Is it true? You can decide that when you bought this microphone, you can decide to use it to be pounding yam. Because you know the head looks like mortar. You can decide to use it for anything. You can decide to wear it like bling bling. Anyway, you're going, it's just, just hanging on your neck. You can decide to do, use it for anything. You can decide to tie it on your forehead, let it be like a horn. You can use it for anything. But if you use it for any other thing, apart from the original purpose of which it's meant for, it's useless. Which means your life becomes useless if you cannot identify that energy in you, that ability in you, that strength in you. You need to discover it. Nobody will tell you. You have to go for a search of it. The first question to begin to ask yourself is, who am I? Why am I here now? Why is it that I'm not dead? Do you know the truth? There's a reason why God has kept you alive. There's a reason why you are in Ghana. There's a reason why you live in Accra. There's a reason why you are born from that father. You are born from that mother. There's a reason why you are in Rural City today. There's a reason why you are here hearing me preach this message. There's a reason why you are fair, you are dark, you are short, you are tall, you are large, you are slim. Everything happens for a reason, child of God. All of the thing is working together to produce a you that must be the you that God designed to be. Begin to ask yourself, why am I here? Shout out by her. Can I shock you? My assignment as a pastor is to help you find out why you are here. You, why you are here is your ministry. I just found out that I, I, I'm not in ministry. You are the one in ministry. My assignment is to unveil your ministry. Your ministry is your work. When I talk about ministry, I'm not talking about being a pastor. No, 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 no. Everyone God created, God created with an ability for service. That word ministry talks about diagonalus, which means service. And can I shock you? Those who serve are blessed. Those who serve are promoted. If you don't serve a co-bank, can a co-bank promote you? If you don't serve, do you know, it is in serving Calvary that Calvary can promote you. If you don't render service, promotion is impossible. Child of God, hear me and hear me well. There is an ability in you to serve humanity. There is an energy in you to produce fruit for the world. God wants to touch this world. God wants to show the world what he can do. How many of you know that through God, man has produced the iPhones, the iPads, the helicopters, the iPlanes. Can I shock you? Everything that is a product of man was originally in intended by God and put the ability in man to produce it. Anything that is produced today was God wiring men to produce it. Hear me? There's a wiring of God in you. There's an ability of God in you. You are wired for something. I'm, it's, like, it's, as, it's as if I'm not talking to anybody here. But there's something I know I'm talking to. There is a wiring of God in you. There's an energy of God in you. Why would God put an energy in you? So that the world will see that there's a God who is invisible but doing things visibly by putting energies in men. May the energy of God in you come out. Even me, my men will have been better than that. Can I say this? If the energy of God in you comes out, hey, they can't kill you before your time. Can I shock you? You will not have any day of luck. Provision answers to your energy. When your energy is engaged, you are rewarded beautifully. I, thought, I want to bring to the point whereby you will not live under the mercy of any man anymore. Can I say this? God has not created any man, anybody to depend on another man. God has given you ability. That's why no man is created to be dominated upon. But can I shock you? If your energy is not discovered, they will dominate over you. But the day your energy is found, you become the master of yourself. Today I prophesy anything making you a slave to life, may that then die and go to hell. May the energy of God in you come out. The ability of God in you shall come out. Lift your voice and turn that amen three times for me. Number two. Number three. My assignment is to teach you and awaken your consciousness to the abilities in you. Ephesians 4 and verse number 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry to the divine of the body of Christ. That was why he made me your pastor. 
My assignment as your pastor is to wake up the giant in you. To call out the energy of God. Can I shock you? There are energies in you. My assignment is to wake it up. Somebody, you're waking up today. And when you wake up, you'll be amazed that the world will look for you. The world doesn't look for dead people. The world are always looking for people that are alive. It's only those that are alive that are making statements. Dead people can't talk. But when you are alive, you speak. You may not be speaking with microphone, but you're speaking in business and millions are being made. You may not be speaking in business. You are speaking in songs and life has been touched. You may not be speaking in tongues. You are speaking with writings. You are speaking with writings. You are producing books. You may not be speaking in books. You are speaking in schools. You are a proprietor. You are speaking in, in hospital. You are a medical doctor. Child of God, anywhere God locates you, God has a voice for you there. Child of God, hear me and hear me. Well. I feel like coming down talking to somebody. There is a voice in you that must be heard. There's a voice in you that must be heard. You are meant to make up your mind. My voice must be heard. Anything swallowing my voice, anything limiting my voice, I resist you today. If you shout amen, your voice that is being resisted must be hindered. My assignment is to wake up your voice. I prophesy that the hand of God upon my life may the voice of God in you come out. I say, may the voice of God in you come out. Somebody hit your leg on the ground and shout an amen that will settle your case. Yeah. The blessing answers to the releasing of your voice. A voiceless man cannot trigger the blessing. A man that can trigger the blessing is a man that has, has found his voice. Can I say it again? There's a voice in you. And shockingly, the world is waiting for your voice. Do you know, no matter how you look like, there's a contribution you're born to make. I pray that this 2021, may you make that contribution before 31st. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. That scripture we read, Ephesians 2, the Bible says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ. Look at where we are in Christ. He didn't create us he didn't create you to become a perfect handiwork of God from your parents. Don't brag about your parents. Don't brag about the thing they get left for you. Brag about who you are now in Christ Jesus. That is where you are meant to stay and become all you are born to be. Look at it. It says, for we are his own workmanship created in Christ Jesus Unto good works. Hey, I read here in my office. I stood up, I stretched my neck. So, my life was designed for good works. Anything not good is not for me. If it's not good, it's not permitted to come out from me. Good works. Good works are amazing works, amazing results. Oh, producing things that will touch the whole world. Good works, excellent masterpiece. That when it comes out, everyone that hears it stands up. Something that will come out from you that will touch the world. You are designed for good works, not for bad works, not for average works. That word good means excellence. That's your design. Always tell yourself, This is my class, this is my style, this is my design. Excellent works. If I say it, it's said excellently. If I do it, it's done excellently. If I produce it, it will be among the best. So from today, anything shabby, you say, no, 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 no. no. Shabbiness is not from me. Anything under, no, 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 no. Whatever comes out of you, the men will see and say, no, this is not too good. That's not God's design for you. God's design for you is good works. Please help me preach to someone shout, 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 tell him, me, like this, I'm made for good works. Tell him again, me, 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 like this. 
If your neighbor is not saying, ask him, are you having, are you having, ask him, are you having a problem? If your neighbor is alive and he doesn't have a problem with God, he, he should be telling you in your ear, me like this, I am made for good works. I am not made for evil works. I am not made for bad works. I am made for good works. And neighbor, hear me from today. What will come out of me will surprise you and surprise my enemy. What will come out of you will shock you. I will shock my world. I will blow my world. Can I shock you? Among all the men born of your father's house, hey, if you're in Christ, you're meant to be at the top class. If it comes out of you, it will be a mega success. From today, can I say this? You will never fail again. That, that word, workmanship simply means God's excellent display of, of skill. When Bible says that you are God's workmanship. It means God's excellent display of skill. Which means when God finished you, you are a skill of God made visible excellently. Nothing can be added. Nothing can be minus. When you are released, you are released with everything that is needed to produce excellence in your kind of work. What I am born to do is where my best is. Do you know that when you are in your, what you're born to do, even if you make mistake, it becomes a style. If you are in it, mistakes become styles. Failure becomes an opportunity to learn more. I've seen people that fail. It, be, it becomes, it becomes, it becomes cool. And people who failed, how they fail became study. People like Michael Faraday, he failed many times. His failure becomes school. People began to study how to fail and how to succeed. Because he was found in his works. Your good works, which is ordained for you by God, that of God, is the place of your prominence. You can be there and not write your name on the history book. Anytime you find your name there, anytime you find yourself there, your name will be written on a history book. What does that mean? What will come out of you will make it that you can't be forgotten. Child of God, God has not called you to pass through the earth and be forgotten. God has called you to pass through the earth that after you are gone, men are still talking about you. Men are still remembering about you. Men are still saying there was a man that passed by. Today we know about Newton, we know about Pluto, we know about men who walked in the 16th centuries, in the 18th centuries. The, the, the knowledge they paraded then is still very visible. Child of God, but there's an uncle of you that died last year. He's as good as forgotten. What is the difference? These men, they found their work, and by their work, they earned prominence. These men, they did job, and when they died, everything forgotten. Child of God, don't live for your stomach, live for posterity. Don't just live for what fits you. Live for impact. It's a decision you make. And when you make that sort of decision, you become amazed what God will do with your life. Many are around living for what will satisfy the stomach. That's not your calling. Your calling is far bigger than that. And until the day you line up with the ultimate vision of God for you, you are nobody. That's why our young girls doesn't live right. That's why our young men doesn't live right. Well, because we are forsaking the work God designed us to do and we're looking for sugar and bread. Sugar and bread are not things you look for. They are things God gives you for finding your work. Are we together? When you find your work, sugar will answer to you. Bread will be in abundance. You won't look, you won't look for food another day. Find your work. You'll be amazed. Life will begin to work well for you. It means to be God's excellent display of skill. Number two, it means to be God's masterpiece. It means to be God's, God's craftsman. God's craftsmanship. It means to be God's perfect work of artistry. Ladies and gentlemen, can we look at a few scriptures? Um, Acts of Apostles chapter number 9, verse 3. In doing your work, that is the environment the blessing is triggered. Are we together? 
As you find your work, what is your work? Ability stored in you. Somebody today begin to study yourself. Are we together? School has not helped most of us. But when you went to school, they only taught you about people's ability. How many of you know that there are, there are theories that will have come out of you if you have studied yourself? And when we went to school, they taught us the theory that Pluton and Newton projected. Who helped them to bring it out? Maybe there was a form of education then that made them to bring out what was in them. Can I shock you? Those that are ruling the life today are those that were able to find vision. And they get back to vision. Those are the ones ruling life. If you cannot find ability in you and connect that ability to a vision, you'll be a slave. What makes me better than you in business is what I see you don't see. It's what I pursue you don't pursue. Hear me everybody. There's an ability in you that you're able to direct your sight. And as that side is directed, you start seeing what others can't see and you start producing it, then men will line up to serve you. Everybody's praying, God, I want men to serve me. This is how men can serve you. This is how you can become great. This is how you can become an authority. Look within you. Find out the ability within you. It is that ability found that enforces the tree green of the blessing. Please, I'm not talking to anybody here. Look at yourself. Tell yourself, I'll find something out of my life. Say it again. I'll find something out of my life. And what I found out, I will release vision to it and use it to rule my world. Acts chapter 9 and verse number 3. And as he journeyed and he came near to Damascus and suddenly there shone around him a light from heaven. And he fell on the earth and heard a voice that said unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, who thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? This is a question of destiny. What would that have me to do for you? What is it that is in me that you're looking for? God is looking for something in you. How many of you know that this was Saul? Saul was busy pursuing something else. And God has to encounter him and say, well, what you are looking for is not what I have created you for. I need to help you to find out what I have created you for. There's an ability in you I want to make use of. How many of you know that if Paul has continued to be Saul, he will only be known as a, at, a, as, 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 at a certain height. He will not be known at the other side. Can I shock you? It was Paul coming out of Saul that made Paul a known person. Paul became a global face, a universal force because of what he found out of himself. Verse 13. And Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many about this man. How much evil he has done against the saints of God in Jerusalem. And here he has come with authority from the chief priest to bind all that call it on your name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way. For he is a choosing vessel. Somebody you a choosing vessel. Amen. Go thy way. For he is a choosing vessel. Unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. And before kings. And before the children of Israel. For I will show him. How great thing he must suffer. For my name's sake. Saul. Was busy. Doing his own thing. And when God encountered him. Jesus told him I said well. You are a choosing vessel for me. You are running about other things. My assignment is to. Collect, connect you. And align you with the energy in you. Now do you know that. Saul now get back to Paul and Paul became a force that brought direction to the church of God. The same church the devil was using him to destroy. He became the one that God began to use him to give church direction. All the Ephesians, all the first Corinthians, all the, all the Colossians, all the Philippians, these are 
Paul wrote it. But can I shock you? This was a man the devil was using as a soul. But God grabbed him and turned him into soul. There is something God wants to grab you to turn into. There is an ability in you that will become your name soon. There is an ability in you. When that ability is discovered, your name changes. God wants to grab you and change your name. God wants to grab you and turn you to a vessel. You are a vessel. You are an ability that God wants to use. What are you meant to be doing? You are meant to be saying like Saul. What do you have me do? This is the prayer you begin to pray. I began praying this prayer from 15. God, what will you want me to do? What will you have me to do? What life have you called me to live? Do you know if you don't begin to ask these questions early, you will get old and find out you never lived. Child of God, existence is not having life. You may be alive now, walking up and down, but you know in God you're not alive. The day you became alive is the day you find out the abilities that God has taught in you. Your abilities taught in God, taught by God in you, is the life you live that makes you become alive in God. If your abilities are not giving activity, can I tell you, around men you are alive, but before God, who has made you, you are dead. Don't be dead before God. Hello? Don't be dead before God. Tell yourself, I will live. I will bring out that ability. Whether you went to school or not, God gave you that ability. Whether you are ugly or beautiful, God gave you that ability. Whether you know how to package yourself or you don't know how to package yourself, God gave you that ability. Why did he give it to you? So that you don't end up scratching through life. So that you don't end up living a cursed life. So that you don't end up disappointing heaven. So that at the end of your day, you receive this accolade. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over these few things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. They say they call the day of end where you meet with your creator face to face. What will you tell him? What will you tell him? You tell him nobody told you. I'm telling you now. You told him I'm not aware. You are getting away now. Drop Saul so that Paul can come out. Can I say it again? Drop Saul so that Paul will come out. Paul is the energy of God for the church. Paul was the energy of the devil against the church. Drop Saul if Paul must come out. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse number 12. The Lord shall open unto you the rich treasures. The heavens shall give you rain even unto your landing season and to bless the works of your hands thou shalt lend to many and thou shalt not borrow glory to Jesus look at what it says here it says, the Lord shall release rain the Lord shall open unto you the good treasures the heavens shall give rain over your land even in seasons why? so that the works of your hands shall be blessed so, the rain is the blessing. It will only fall upon the works of your hands. If your hand has no work, the rain will fall and it will not locate you. And what is the work of your hand? The ability God has given on your inside. Roll it out. The work of your hand is not that you're a mechanic because your father taught you a mechanic. It's not because you're still a teacher because you, you couldn't pass all your, all, your, all your subjects and they say, well, go to Jesus' training college. And you went there and you came out, you now call it, that's not your work. That's your vocation. God says, well, the real blessing is upon the works of your hand. Do you know that other things you do are vehicles through which the works that God has ordained you to produce can be connected to? Any other thing is vehicle. But there is a main work you must find out. There is main ability. There is main work you are meant to find out. That work is tied to the ability that is in you. Find it out. That is where the blessing will surprise you. When God blesses the work, you are blessed forever. Other things are vehicle. Don't just stay on the vehicle. Locate the main work. Your best is in you. 
Somebody say it again, your best is in you. Amen. Look at another man that God found like that and everything to his work. Peter, Matthew chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse number 18 and 19. Bible said, And Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting their nets, for they were fishermen. And he said unto me, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So they were fishermen, but their walk in God were to fish men back to God. Glory to God. And do you know the truth? As fishermen, According to Luke chapter 5, Peter was a failure. But as a fisher of men, Peter was an outstanding success. That is where the blessing is. Somebody, find your voice. I know you're doing so many things. Find the original voice in you. That is where the blessing will locate you and, and you, become a, you, become, you become a star. You become something that will surprise people. After you are gone, people are still connecting to the things you've done. Find your voice. I pray for somebody today. Your voice shall be found. I say again, your voice shall be found. I say again, your voice shall be found. In the name of Jesus. What do you do? Know that you are sent here by someone. Get connected to the one that sent you. Nobody can explain you like the one that sent you. All of us in this hall right now, you are the product of a producer. You did not fall from heaven. Can I shock you? Your parents were not the one that created you. They were the source through which you came. Hello? Can I, can I say it? Your parents were not your creator. They were your source. They were the passage through which the spirit you entered the earth. We were not flesh from the beginning. We were spirits. All of you here watching me, you are a spirit. But what God did, because no man can live on earth as a spirit. God put you in your mother's womb for nine months. So you take up flesh to come to the earth. Can I say it again? The flesh you took is what I call resident permit to live on earth. Do I have foreigners here? Maybe you're in Nigeria, you're Togolese, or you're Cameroonian, you're here right now. For you to live in Ghana, you need what is called resident permit. If not, government does not know you live here. For government to know you live here, you need resident permit. Now, for you to live on earth, heaven must know. How will heaven know? You need flesh to live on earth. So God will put, put you in the flesh. Put you in the womb of a woman. So that you come out with flesh. The flesh is not the real you. The real you was the spirit God created and put in the flesh to take up flesh. But you know what most of us has done? We made the mistake because when we now came to the earth, we are glorifying flesh and forget to know that we are spirits. Many of us, have you seen somebody, somebody can spend five hours on, on, on a hair salon because you want to fix the hair. But they will not spend one minute fixing the spirit. Somebody can spend, spend three, uh, uh, 30 minutes taking, taking shower. Making sure that the nails are without uh, fungus. Everything about you is balanced. You know, when you come out, you check out yourself in the mirror. You know, am I balanced? But we don't have one minute for God. What are you doing? You are busy taking care of your flesh. Whenever you look at yourself at the mirror, the one you see at the mirror is not the you. The real you is your spirit. The real you. And can I shock you? That is the one that will one day die. That is the one that will one day get to God and go ask him, what did you do with your life? Have you wondered anytime you want to do what is wrong, there is a voice in you saying, don't do, don't do, don't do. One is saying, do, do, do. The one saying, do, most times in the flesh. Because the flesh knows that when you close your eyes, the flesh will go back to the dust. Don't allow flesh to drag you to the dust. Don't allow flesh to drag you to the dust. If flesh drags you to the dust, you've lost eternity. The original you is your spirit. And that is where your abilities are. That is where your strengths are. Am I talking to anybody? Here? That's where your strengths are. That is where your abilities are. It is from your spirit you should find your walk. Not from your flesh. Any walk that only glorifies flesh will not give you a tomorrow. The walk that is from your spirit will not just glorify flesh, will satisfy heaven. I'd like you to begin to live out your purpose. Live to satisfy heaven. I'm not talking to anybody. Live that your life produces glory and honor. Maybe somebody is not comfortable with what I'm saying. But you know it's true. I need 
need to tell you. That's truth. And to run from truth is to live in error. And to live in error is to damage your destiny. Child of God. God has put something in you. And I stand before you today praying, may what God has put in you come out to bless your world. Somebody give me that amen like a thunder again. Somebody shout an amen like a thunder. I'll just read one verse of scripture we close because of our time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many of you know that everything God created, God did not create in his image. It's only man that God created in his image. Why? God began introducing himself to us as a God that has works. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So God was a creator. God was a worker. In chapter 2, the Bible said, and God rested from all his works. And can you check out the works of God? The works of God has been sustaining the earth. How many of you know that the earth is being sustained by the work of God? The work of God has, has lasted the taste of time. Men has come and go. Generations has come and go. But the works of God is still intact. The sun God created in Genesis is still the sun that will come out today. The moon that will come out in the night is still the moon that will come out the one God created. The sea, the, can I show you? The, 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 the sea over here is from Adam. Every work of God lasts. And God now said, Let's make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Let them have the ability to walk in all spheres of life. God made you to be like him so you can produce works for him. Do you know why God made you? God made you to be like him so that where his works ended, you progress it. Please, am I helping anybody? Your assignment is to progress the works of God. The works of God. The works of God were not concluded. They were put on a stop so that you can rise up and finish it. God made the sun. Made the moon. But you know, man has put sun in a halogen lamp. This is sun. This is moon in the house. God made rain. People have made showers in your bedroom. Hello? God made breeze. God, people have put fan in your house. If men did not find out the abilities of God in them, will they progress God's work? The blessing answers to the ability in you that progresses God's work. Please, is somebody hearing me? You want God to bless you? Find out the ability in you that progresses God's work. Find it out, find it out, find it out. This one, stop, play, stop playing church. Find out the ability in you that progresses God's work. Find it out. The day you find out that ability in you that progresses the works of God around you, you'll be amazed. You'll be so blessed. And men will be asking you, what is your secret? Any man you see that God blessed, this was what helped them. They were able to find out something in them that progresses God's work. And hear me, whatever progresses God's work will feed humanity. Are we together? Whatever progresses God's work will feed and establish and settle humanity. Ephesians 2 verse 10. We're going to look at it from the NLT scriptures version. He said, and it is God himself who has made us what we are and given to us a new life from Christ Jesus and long ago, he planned that we should spend this life of ours helping other people. Did you get it? Hey, church, are you here? Yes, Please, am I losing you? Yes, Can I read it again? Okay, listen now. He said, it is God himself who has made us what we are. And has given us a new life from Christ Jesus. And long ago... He planned that we should spend this life of ours helping other people. Anytime you progress creation, you become a helper to nation. Anytime you progress God's work, you become a helper. And can I show you, the more you help people, the more you are paid. Your blessing is tied to your finding out your purpose. 
Can I tell you, you are not born to live the life of anybody. You are not born to copy anybody. You are not born to live the way others are living. You are born to find your unique life and live it. Find it. Nobody will show you. Find it. In finding it, it's your promotion. In finding it, it's your settlement. In finding it, it's your elevation. In finding it, that is where you become special. Somebody 20, 22, 23, 24 till you die, become a special person. Yeah. Anything that is hidden in you, I pray that from today, may the Holy Ghost begin to help you to find out who you are born to be. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now to be able to do that, there are three things you must do. Avoid thinking self. Avoid thinking self. Develop compassion for people. If you want to become the most blessed, want to become the most blessed, hey, off your eyes from yourself. Those who concentrate on themselves becomes nothing. But can I shock you? The greater you can be has to do with the eye you have on blessing other people. Child of God, live to be a blessing and you'll be blessed. Live to be a blessing. Live to think about how can I support? How can I settle? How can through me somebody's joy can be complete? How can it be that through me? How many of you know that God is the most blessed? Why? Because the Bible says, for God so loved the world. God wasn't thinking about himself. God was thinking about the world. And because God was thinking about the world, no man is blessed the way God has blessed. And because God is too blessed, he can bless other people. May God bless you too much to become a blessing to people. Even me, my image will have been better than that. Yeah. Somebody the loudest amen here been born for a testimony. Yeah. My keep that by you. Off your eyes from yourself. Off your eyes from yourself. Now look at Jesus in John chapter 6 from verse 5. Bible said, and when he lifted up his eyes, he saw great company came unto him and he said unto Philip, whence can we buy bread for this to eat? The blessing of multiplication came because Jesus was thinking about how to satisfy many. Child of God, I'm giving you secrets. Now, I'm telling you, I don't care to know what you believe before. I'm giving you tangible secrets. If you can begin to run with it, I give you a few years. You shall be at the top. And they said to him, 5,000 men were here. Only men were 5,000, including women, including men, including children. But in the truth, the first force that can make you a, 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 a monumental blessing is that you are having compassion for people. When you look at people, you feel for them. You feel for them. Do you know that God is so blessed because God feels for people. There are people who don't feel for anybody. There are pastors who does not feel for anybody at all. At all. At all. One day I was in a place, a church had a program, and when they finished, a man that came said, wow, let me not say it. But can I shock you? The best of you begins with your heart thinking about people. The more you want to be a blessing to people, there's no way God won't bless you. How many of you have ever heard about Dangote? He's not a Christian, but can I shock you? All his businesses, is all about helping people. How far has he gone? When you think people you become large. If you think self, you die small. Can I say it again? If you think self, you will die small. Think people. God will enlarge you. Sit well. Think people. Can I, everything you have today, the Gucci you're, 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 you're buying, Gucci wasn't thinking self. Georgie Armani wasn't thinking self. People that think people grows large. People that think self dies for nothing. From today, and you know the people that the only thing they think about is my family, my family, my family. You will slave yourself for your family. At the end of the day, you'll die. Your family will not look at you. Don't think family, think globally. Think how can I touch the world? You are a global force. You are not a local champion. God has not made you to die locally. Can I shock you? You are, you are a product that should be sold globally. The world is looking for you. I pray for somebody today. May the world see you. May your vision cut across all sides of life. As you are dreaming for people, you are dreaming to be a blessing to people. May the hand of God rest upon you that will sell you to nations. 
Sodom, he said, I, he had compassion. He had compassion. And you know what they told him? Look at it. They, 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 said, they said, where else can we find bread and that these people may eat? And this he said to prove them. But for he himself knows what to do. And Philip said, 200 penny, 200 penny, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. 200 what? 200 penny what? It's not sufficient. 200. Do you know, I studied and I found that a hundred penny is a day's work. Or a penny, sorry, is a day's work. When you walk, it's just like in our, most of our countries in Africa, they have minimum wage. So when you walk in a day, they pay you one penny. You know, say 200 penny what? Which means the work that is done for 200 days almost half a year or more than, more than half a year so to feed the people there more than half a year of work will be needed he wanted to spend like 8 months salary in one day that's compassion he saw the people and saw that they needed help may help drive you when help of people drive you may people's condition drives you something will drive out of you the help of people, the need of people. When you see people, may their need drive you. May what they are not having drive you. May their lack drive you. Don't be driven by comfort. I just want to end comfort. Cheap comfort will not give you a future. See people, may their need drive you. When the need of people drives you, it will drive out something in you. And when it drives out, it becomes what God will put his hand upon to bless you may something well up compassion in you yeah. and as compassion is welled up may you drive out your strengths and be all that you're born to be yeah. in the mighty name of Jesus yeah. child of God be compassionate let love for people drive you anyone you see think about how can I progress how can I improve him how can I touch him how can I change his world how can through me he rises up the energy of God in you which is the work you're born to do gears towards making other people and I found that the more you make people the more God makes you may God make you please am I helping you any you know any way you enter you enter a church start thinking about what can I do to make this church better what idea can I bring to make it better anyone you get closer to start asking yourself what can I do to make this person get better but you know we live in the world whereby when people come to your house they are thinking how can I kill you and own your house how can this your car become my car you are thinking, Paul, how can I, how can I, how can I, how can I marry his wife? Somebody gets to a, somebody's house, a beautiful wife, you are asking yourself, how can I, how can it be me that is marrying his wife? Something is wrong with you. You won't marry her. I've seen people who, who will come to your house, they look at this guy. Nah, if I kill this man now, nah, I will possess this house. Kill him. Somebody too will kill you. Don't think like that at all. That is the way poor people think develop a large heart. You're, 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 you're after making sure that anybody you encounter leaves you with a smile. If you alone will give a smile to a million people, one day a million people will return smiles to you. I'm telling you. If, through, if you alone, you alone, we are able to put smile in the mouth of a hundred people, the day a hundred people returns back to put smile on you, how large will your life be? A man had a birthday at 55. He got 55 cars. Not moto. Dear leather machines. He woke up in the morning. Across the street, 55 cars parked. 55 people were standing there from 5.30 a.m. He drove the new, the new car, parked there. And when it was time, he opened, he woke up. He was told he, he woke up. They began singing a song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. They, they, they walked in into his, his compound. So when he had people, I said, you're not coming here today. He rushed out. He saw 55 men with their wives. When all of them came, they came, they said, sir, happy birthday, one car. Happy birthday, two car. Happy birthday. All of them were just passing by, dropping car. 55 cars on one morning. And they asked them, why did you do that? Did you plan? He said, yes, all of us came together and planned. He said, how did it happen? One said, I was poor. What he told me helped me. I was struggling. He advised me. I was not having. He gave me. 
I didn't have. He showed me the way. All of them, 55 of them, was touched by him. And at his 55th birthday, they brought him 55 cars. Somebody, my assignment on this post office is to encourage you. Become that man who doesn't think about himself. Yourself to come last. When you think people, you're on top. It's just a matter of time, I'm telling you. It will be as if you're forgotten. Don't worry. Don't worry. You'll be shocked. Because whatever that is sown becomes what must be reaped. Somebody, I pray for you. As you think people, may you be lifted above people. Yeah. Oh, that name should have been better and stronger than that. Yeah. I say, as you think people, may you, may you be greater than people. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Number two, avoid pursuing pleasure. Start pursuing impact impact avoid pleasure avoid pleasure can i shock you if you start your day pursuing pleasure you will end your day with pressure i've seen people who ended with pressure pressure everywhere i saw a man at 75 pressure everywhere they said he used to have cars he used to he, he used to it's not a testimony don't even pray that god may my testimony be i used to i used to go to abroad but now you're in the village I used to have a car, but now you're trekking. I used to have own a multinational company, but now there is nothing that can be credited to your name. I used to shouldn't be a testimony. He used to. But with everything is gone. Why? Because when he was on top, he was only enjoying himself. Pleasure will limit you. Look at what the Bible says concerning pleasure. Shati bokataha. Lakrati bahasadas. Proverbs 21 and verse 17. He that loveth pleasure shall be poor. He that loveth wine and oil shall never be rich. If you love pleasure, hey, you love pleasure. When others are walking, you're looking for who to give you. Instead of you sweating, can I shock you? They say time to sweat. Sweat when it's time to sweat. Walk when it's time to walk. Don't Start life pursuing pleasure. You just have the first money. Maybe three, uh, 30,000 CDs or 100,000 dollars. The only thing you think about doing was going to buy a car. You're on the ground, no? First money is not for car. First money is not for even building a house. First money is for investment that will sustain you to do other things. When I was small, I kept on asking God, God, can you bless me once? Once! If you can never help me once, don't help me again. Once is enough. Once that can be well managed is enough. Somebody, within this season, God will drop something in your hand that can start to live forever. Yeah. I know who will help you manage it is because when it comes, you're wise, you're wise, you're wise, you're wise, you're wise, you're wise. Somebody is paid. Maybe he, he did a contract, they pay him. Maybe they pay him, maybe if he's in Nigerian currency, okay, 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 maybe he's in dollars. They pay him a hundred thousand dollars, and he he took eighty thousand to go and buy a car. Now, when the engine of that car knocks, can't even produce it. To change tire of it, the car will park for two months. The tire has issues. He will park the car for two months before he realizes to buy to, to, just one tire. You have made them. You cheated yourself. Church, grow up. Be wise. Be what? Wise. Be what? Wise. Be what? Wise. When I was growing, the house I said I won't live in. I'll grow into it. There's a house if you give me, then I will tell you, no, 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 no. Because if you pay for one year for me, how will I, how will I pay the other years? You just have small money. All the money you have, 30,000 cities. You went and paid for a house, 30,000 cities. Bam! You love pleasure. Pressure will locate you. One year after. Gang, 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 gang. Landlord, you know, here now, three months, they will send you a letter. Hey, three months, are you, are you renewing? He said, I will renew. You start fasting. You don't need to fast where wisdom will have helped you. If you put wisdom to work, you don't need fasting and prayer. There are people that pray for everything. There are things you don't need to pray for if you can think well. Do you know, fasting and prayer comes in because you never planned well? Because you never size yourself well? Because, because you love pleasure. Hey, pleasure is an enemy of life. 
It should be enjoyed at a certain level. Don't start your life pursuing pleasure. At the phase all of you are now, you shouldn't be looking for pleasure. Put yourself under pressure. Others are sleeping, bomb midnight candles. Others are wilding away with friends. No, friend for what? I've not found my level. I've not found my foot. Why would I? No, no, no. There are things I can't do. When I was marrying my wife, they were, those days, let's go and eat out. Where? Now? No. Give me some. No, I won't. I won't even, I won't even know whether she loves me. So they have money to demand. I say, no, we can't start our life like that. We will grow into it. And thank God we are getting there. Am I talking? There are days, those days, let's start a, let's start a car. No. We will take dropping. We will take the rest. Let me even see how, how you'll be working with me. How, how, how will he look with two of us, two of us that are tall? When we're working with you, how will he look like? And thank God we are no more there. We did those things there to be where we are now. Where we are now, we can't trick again. But I've seen people who began. Wife to be will say, no, 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 no. How are you going to trick? You go and borrow car. Just to please her. You won't know whether she's marrying you or whether she's marrying the foolish you. Because that one, you're not wise at all. You borrow the car. Then that's sweet. Don't worry. I need, I need ice cream. You go and borrow money, buy ice cream. When you're not married her, she say, well, I want turkey or turkey. You don't say, I don't have. You must have, oh. You started it, you must continue. You started it. <laughs> if you start it all, you must finish it. Don't complain about what you started. You just want to give her pleasure. Ah, pleasure will kill you. By the time you finally marry her, she gives you a list. Mama's list, sister's list, brother's list, cousin's list, niece's list. Niece's list. By the time you see all the list, you are in, in 33, is it 33 or 32 military hospital? High blood pressure will just attack you. Child of God, don't start life with pressure. It doesn't help at all. What you can't do, I can't do. What I can do, I can do. Am I talking? I've lived that, my, like that and I'm not regretting it at all. Do you know that the people we aimed it at are large, they didn't start living large. They started from scratch. Check all of them. Check all of them. Go and check, go and check their history. All of them started small. They grow. Where they are now, you are envying. You just want to become them overnight. You just want to become them overnight. If, if someone now, will, will, a person will now just go up to, 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 to Shiloh and say, and say to uh, Bishop Edipo, please, sir, I, I, I just want to be like you. You won't die. How many years of labor? How many years? And some of you too, you see they are in their glory. Maybe they are flying jets. Of which rulers did they one they have? Yeah. They are flying jet now. You are now angry. Why will they fly jet? Where were you when you were tricking? For every man who has labor, they say day of glory. Yeah. I know some of you are laboring now. Glory is going to come. Yeah. Somebody, if you love yourself, shout at the man like a thunder. Yeah. Finally, stop feeling I'm too small. I'm too young. This thing is entering, is eating people. See a boy of 25 years old tell you, well, I'm still young. I know you are still young, but you are no more young. Because what your mates are doing, your mates are already doing amazing things. How many of you know that in the world of now, 20 years old are becoming CEOs? 17 years old are graduating. In our day, eh? in our day, who can graduate at 17? You know, but this day, 17 is a graduate. 20 is powering multinational company. At 22, you're already a mega, a mega, a mega star boy. And you, at this phase, can I tell you, we are in a new phase. We're in a new dispensation. We're in a jet, we're in a, a, an age that is different from the other age. Hey! Hey! Our father has got married at 45. You in the now, you're waiting to be 35 before you get married. Men are married now at 27, 28, 25, 24. You are waiting until gray hair comes out of your head. Stop saying, I'm still small. I'm still young. At any age you found yourself, start to do something from that age. 
Jesus found himself at 12, 12, 12, 12. Jesus left his father and his mother, got to the synagogue and said, well, can't I do my father's business? At 12, Josiah was a king at eight. At eight years, he was a king. And you know, at eight age, being a king, he built churches. He built the temple of God. He fought against Baal. He fought against the enemies of God. At eight years, and God so much blessed him. Timothy, 12 years, he was a pastor. Don't wait until you, 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 you bring out gray hair before you know you're old. At any face you are, tell yourself, well, I am up to the age of responsibility. I'll begin to pursue life from this age. Child of God, the age you are now, begin to pursue, the, to find out the energy of God in you. Am I making sense? Am I making sense? Begin to pursue it. Stop telling yourself, I am young. I am small. I am not up to. You're up to... My assignment this morning is to tell you you're up to... Stop getting yourself deceived by looking at yourself at the mirror. Maybe there's no wrinkle on your face. Can I tell you that one day the wrinkle must come? Begin to size up yourself now. Instead of wasting money, invest it. Don't say, well, I'm too small. Let me waste it now. When I grow older, I will invest. What if you grow older and there was no opportunity? I met a man finishing himself. He said, the pastor, you don't, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. There's hope. Tomorrow is going to bring another one. That was two years ago till today. No other one. He has backed out from his house. He has gone to become a boy boy in somebody's house. God forbid that you ever lived as, as, as a head and later you became a tail. That you lived in your own house. Now you are squatting in somebody's house. May you never come to that level at all. Yeah. Somebody lift your hand and shout an amen like a thunder. Yeah. Lift your hand and shout an amen like a thunder. Yeah. Lift your hand and shout an amen like a thunder. Yeah. I don't want to live this life without being blessed. Therefore, I must find the energy in me. I must find the voice in me. I must find the ability in me. I must find my follow come. The thing that God has put inside of me, I must not die with it. Somebody, it should be a prayer in your heart. Lord, may I never die full. May every good gift in me be expressed. May every good ability in me be expressed. That thing that I carry in me, may it be expressed. Lord says, if you can express it, then his hand will set upon it. And when his hand rests upon it, the world will not forget you forever. Stand on your feet. Lift your hand and say, Father God, I know I'm the blessed of God. And I found out this morning that the blessing will rest upon the works of my life. Upon the energy of God given to me to fulfill destiny. Lord, I've come to find out there's a difference between job and work. Help me, oh God, not to live my life only for jobs help me father god to find my work so i can find my voice help me to find my work help me to find my work help me to find the ability of god stored in my inside the energy of god stored on my inside the strength of god stored on my inside help me oh god to find it as i find it oh god i am so convinced that this i be blessed of god lift up your voice and make it a power this moment add power to it open your mouth and pray about it lord help me lord help me If I'm here, I'll pray with all my heart. Help me, Lord. Help me, Father. May I never waste my life. Help me not to waste myself. Help me to find myself. Help me not to pursue pleasure. Early in life. I don't want to end my life in pleasure, in pressure, in pressure. Help me, Lord, to begin to pursue. Pursue living an impactful life. Pursue touching somebody's life. Help me, Lord, to become an answer to somebody. Help me to think people. Help me to stop thinking I'm still a child. 
help me to rise up and take responsibility. Somebody pray, Lord, help me to rise up and take responsibility.